Do you see? This is why they tell you not to pick at a pimple because I definitely picked at this and made it so much worse and now it's scabbed over. It doesn't look that great. Hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla and I like to talk about books. So let's go ahead and talk about some books. Specifically today, I want to talk about the book Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. watched my April reading list video, you know that this was number one on my April TB, T, to be read and <laughs> TBR. And I actually finished it pretty quickly, although I'm probably not going to post this review for two weeks. So when you're seeing it, I don't know. But short version, I really enjoyed this book. I think that everybody who recommended it I think that some issue that a lot of people might have with this book is that while it's labeled as like post-apocalyptic sci-fi, it's definitely different than a lot of other books in that genre. So I think a lot of people who are expecting like a super, super gritty, heavy post-apocalyptic story, a super sci-fi kind of story, are obviously probably going to be a little disappointed and I think people who don't want any of that actually might enjoy it more than they think they would. So that's just kind of my two cents about maybe the labeling and why potentially some people were like disappointed with this book just because it wasn't bad but it maybe wasn't what they expected and I totally understand that. Like if you go into it with a certain expectation and it's pretty different, then obviously you're just kind of like, I don't know, that wasn't vibing with me. But anyway, I am going to talk about some spoilers in this. I'm going to give a little summary synopsis and I'll put a timestamp down below. So if you want to skip over the summary and go right into the review, you can absolutely do that. But I will be saying some spoilers in this summary. So if you kind of just want to go to the review, I'll leave out spoilers during the review but just be warned I'm definitely going to talk about spoilers in this summary synopsis so you've been warned let's just get into the summary station 11 by Emily St. John St. John Mandel is a post-apocalyptic sort of sci-fi novel that follows the aftermath of a global flu pandemic the flu in this story is called the Georgia flu and it's like an epidemic pandemic situation but the story begins with the death of an actor named Arthur on stage. He's performing a play and this is actually witnessed by like the entire audience including a child actor named Kirsten. It's also witnessed by a man named Jeevan, Jeevan and he is like kind of trying to help during this time. He actually has this huge revelation at the time where he's like I think I should be a paramedic. I think that that's like what my calling is. He's kind of trying to figure out what his calling is. So it's a little bit sad because right after this happens is when this whole like pandemic hits and it hits just insane. It is absolutely like nothing anyone's ever seen before. So we kind of experience the first stage, the wave of this pandemic through the character Jeevan. And like I said, he witnesses this play. And then after he leaves, he actually gets a call from his friend who is an epidemiologist. And his friend just warns him about the Georgia flu and is like, I'm already like starting to get sick after working on this ward. What I'm seeing is almost everyone who gets it dies. Like this is insane. It's spreading so quickly. So so he basically warns him, he's like, you need to like get away from people, you need to hole up somewhere, go to your brother's house, stock up on supplies now because people are going to get word of this in a few more hours and things are going to be crazy. So he manages, he's like fortunate enough to be able to get to the store kind of earlier than everybody. He fills up a bunch of shopping carts with essentials and he goes to his brother's apartment. And his brother is like a writer and he actually suffered an injury, I think it's like a war injury. So he basically like can't really get out and about and leave the apartment now he kind of has it's like a I guess a disability I don't remember exactly what it is it's something though where he like can't walk he's in a wheelchair and so he goes to hole up at his brother's apartment and essentially watches through the apartment through their telescope and everything like the unfolding of everything but yeah so he goes to his brother's apartment and then it actually flashes forward at that point you don't really understand about all of the unfolding of how things unravel until later it approaches it through flashbacks so it actually goes forward 
forward 20 years to Kirsten, the little girl from the play who witnessed Arthur's death. So it follows an adult Kirsten navigating the world after like the fall of civilization. And she is actually part of a traveling like entertainment troupe that performs Shakespeare and also performs music as well. Yeah, they call themselves the Traveling Symphony and kind of like that name would suggest, they travel around, they're kind of nomadic, they roam around going from town to town and like place to place and they just stay at these little villages and areas for like a few days or maybe a few weeks. Travel, perform, the beginning kind of of their stories that they're traveling to a town where some some of their members were left behind and stayed for I think it was like two years and they came back to get them because one of their members she was like pregnant and had a little girl they go back to this town and they're not there and everyone of this town is acting super weird and it's basically been taken over by this really like religious cult I guess and we learn a little bit more about that later but um yeah this like super religious cult has taken over so they move on they try to find their friends and basically the rest of this story follows their journey to a place called the Museum of Civilization that is in the nearby airport to find some of their missing members because they believe there was like a thing where they were all trying to go there and they believe that they might be there and they might have gotten there so this is where they're going to head and this museum is actually run by a a man named Clark and this guy is a close longtime friend to Arthur who was the actor who died on stage like at the beginning of the story. So we actually learn a lot about Arthur and their whole relationship and their friendship through flashbacks and I mean in general the story actually unfolds through a lot of flashbacks as well. So it sets up a lot of these relationships and how characters and relationships are connected whether they realize it or not and the ways in which they're connected. One of these connections is that Arthur's first wife, Miranda, actually is the creator of a comic called Station Eleven, which obviously the book is kind of named for. Um, and this comic Kirsten carries around all of the time and like loves to read and this kind of comes up again a little bit later in the story. So Clark is at this airport. Clark actually was stranded at this airport initially with Arthur's second wife Elizabeth who is the mother to his son and his son is ends up growing up to be like the leader of this cult and he's like this really weird kind of kid. He was kind of a unique kid and he grows up to be the leader of this cult. Uh, they leave the airport and like that's what they go do with their <laughs> with their whole I don't know with their lives and so yeah his son Tyler ends up being like believing he's some sort of like chosen prophet and leads all these people during this cult yeah I guess that's just something worth mentioning that's a big plot like that's a big part of kind of what happens on their way to the Museum of Civilization they run into these people and this cult and the prophet aka Arthur's son Tyler and Kirsten has like this whole big run-in with him where she mentions Station Eleven the comic book and he also had a copy so the whole thing is that and we kind of learn this via like flashbacks and stuff like that that Miranda made only a few copies and gave them to Arthur and Arthur ended up giving one to his son Tyler and then another to the little girl that he was in the play with Kirsten and that's like there's a lot of stuff like that but that's probably one of the bigger ones in the story but there's a lot of stuff like that that just connects these characters in really interesting ways and I love it I just love when things like that happen and stuff that you barely even noticed ends up being like a really fun little part of the story and it really ties in to me that shows a lot of thoughtfulness in the creation of the story so anyway we also end up learning what becomes of Jeevan and who was the character that we really watched like the collapse of civilization through like through his brother's apartment. He talks about basically watching it out the windows. We do get to see some of that like the fall of everything via Clark's flashbacks. Jeevan's experience I think was the one that really showed like the broader scope of what was happening since Clark's experience they were a little it was a little more insular. They were insulated in 
in an airport, they weren't really watching and seeing as much of like people around them, the world around them. They weren't in like a city area. So I think that that definitely, we really see that through Jeevan's perspective. In the end, Kirsten does find her friend Charlie at the museum and she's reunited with the members that they lost like from their troop and everything. Um, she gets to meet Clark and then they share like a lot of time together that's really sweet because they both remember Arthur and Clark gets to tell her more about Arthur that she maybe doesn't really remember as well. And then they actually are like looking through a telescope and Clark shows her that there's like a town or a village nearby that seems to have like obviously all electricity and stuff is gone like everything fell apart but he sees a town that seems to be like lighting itself up and like that maybe electricity is starting to pop back up places again and Kirsten gets really excited to go visit it and at the end she sets back out on the road with her troupe her acting musical troupe and she gives him one of the station 11 comics and says you know we're gonna come back here and every time I come back I'm gonna switch out and I'll give you a different one and I'll take another one so that there's always one here and it's so sweet and I don't know something about it just really touched me Clark's whole story absolutely touched me I think he was like my favorite character to read but they're all really it's a very like human story and he opens up the comic and starts reading it in the end and he notices he like remembers the scene that Miranda wrote about he's like oh my gosh like I was there I recognize these characters as like people that I know and so I really liked the way that everything kind of tied together and came full circle in the end but yeah I really liked that kind of full circle moment in I don't know I really liked the tenderness and the beauty that people could experience in this kind of really harsh post-apocalyptic world that's full of obviously like a lot of scary things so I really really enjoyed that and yeah that's about it for the story I'm gonna get right into my review and some of the things that I really enjoyed about this book so my review will be like more spoiler free because obviously I already spoiled in the summary um so this part should be safe if you're still planning to read it and you just want an idea of what kind of story it's gonna be. So right off the bat something that I really loved in this book that was happening pretty early pretty much from the get-go was all of the foreshadowing. It's sprinkled in in my opinion just enough to like hint at things to come especially in those very early chapters but not so much as to be like corny or annoying it's just enough to really set up the story and I think that this is a really nice little extra bit to include because it helps to keep the reader interested and invested in the story it helps to kind of nudge you along and be like hey there's more to come this will be something that'll to watch out for this will come back later and I really really like that because it just helps keep keep you so invested and so in tune with the story this also works really well because a lot of the story ends up on unfolding in a non-linear way so I feel like this kind of helps everything stay connected I just feel like that's really works in this non-linear kind of storytelling um the other thing I like is it gets into the action and the plot like right away immediately like Jeevan is rushing and finding out about a pandemic and getting to his brothers and especially with his friend calling from an ER it gets right into the action and it gets you seamless information and backstory and setup for both the reader and the character at the same time so it really is effective in that way something kind of relating back a little bit to the foreshadowing Shadowing, something that I really enjoy in this book is how it works through the story with a lot of flashbacks. So as I said, it's not perfectly linear. A ton of backstory and connections are made and told via flashbacks to before the virus. This is an excellent storytelling method if done really well and really clear, and I think in this case it is done really well. It suits this particular story because it gives the reader a break from kind of like that bleak and a little bit difficult to read post-apocalypse to return to kind of a pre-apocalypse reality and it also just keeps reminding you of really all that's lost in the fall of civilization in like a post-apocalyptic world like really all that's lost this is a really good way to kind of keep 
you with the perspective of what that truly means to be like in a post-apocalyptic world. And it also allows for the really gradual reveal of information and relationships and how these are connected, which again also helps keep the reader invested and interested, but it also helps keep the pacing of the story really steady. So there aren't really massive lulls. There's always kind of a little something happening to kind of keep you engaged. There are a few specific parts that really hit like close to home. I feel like basically all of Clark's parts that really show how the pandemic unfolded for him. These like were really emotional for me. I feel like these parts were, these were some of the most touching and some of the ones that stayed with me in like a really visceral way. I'm not entirely sure why these parts hit so much harder than a lot of the other parts, but Clark's parts, I could like feel his feeling when he was in the airport. And I don't know why, or if that was just me, or if that character just resonated with me more deeply. I don't know, I'm like not, an old British man like not like I don't know but his parts just really hit me I don't know there's a lot to enjoy about this book it's different you know it's about it's like I said it's character it's people it's human driven and it's very emotionally driven so expect to go on the emotional journey more than necessarily the action path journey and it's not it's not necessarily a good or bad thing but it depends on what you're expecting so i think a lot of people going in expecting like post-apocalyptic sci-fi action adventure like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Uh, you're gonna be disappointed by this because this that's not what this is so it's definitely a more tender story and that's just something to keep in mind i absolutely loved it i think i've already read two of my pro what'll probably be my favorite books of the year in like the last two weeks which what's gonna happen the rest of the year i don't know but i absolutely love this book i think the things to enjoy and take away from it are many but my personal kind of opinion is that the story is really well told, well written, descriptive, both story and character driven, but very like emotional, visceral. Um, but it also has like, it has good pacing. It's not like dragging on and these emotional lulls and lulls from the action or lulls from the story. It's a very well paced and it leaves just enough open to interpretation while in my opinion tying together like certain threads, the threads that need to be tied together, if that makes sense. But a lot of it gets tied together and you do get to see how all of these characters touch each other. I just absolutely loved it, would highly recommend it. I'm gonna be honest, I think I give it five stars. But yeah, let me know below if you have read this, if you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it. That's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you later.